Ash Ofra, Onion Skin. You're on ABC Newcastle Breakfast with Dan and Jenny. It's a quarter to nine. Now, last year's budget was criticised for its lack of focus on funding for women. A blokey budget. But I wonder if you're feeling a little bit different about this budget this time around. This budget is being promoted as a big one for women, funding across multiple areas, including $354 million for women's health to uh, address some of the big challenges there, $998 million over four years towards reducing domestic and family violence and supporting survivors. There's also money for education programs around consent, respectful relationships, $320 million over four years for legal services, as well as looking at women's superannuation. So what kind of difference will this make? Dr Julia Coffey is a sociologist and senior lecturer with the School of Humanities and Social Science at the University of Newcastle. Good morning, Dr Coffey. Good morning. It's clear the government has paid more attention to women in this budget. What do you make of the funding that has been allocated? Well, I think first of all, they really had to, given the last 12 months that we've had, particularly the last six months, and the focus on violence against women, you know, in the media, but also the focus very much on Parliament House and what plays out there. Um, they were really, I think, in a position where they really had to be seen to be um, doing something and be seen to be putting um, money into areas that they haven't traditionally invested in, like childcare and other kinds of... Um, you know, services and situations where women are in the majority employed. So, you know, 90% of the workforce in aged care and childcare um, are women. So that's, I think, a really positive thing in itself, definitely. How important is childcare? When we're talking about... Oh, I mean, childcare affects fathers, men, of course, as well. But how important is adequate and accessible childcare in making sure that women can work, contribute lead uh, happy and healthy lives? Yeah, childcare is essential in, um, in terms of being able to increase women's participation in the labour force. So, yeah, I mean, of course, childcare benefits families, it benefits children, it benefits, you know, mothers and fathers and all workers, basically. So, yeah, I totally agree that um, just the investment in childcare in of itself shouldn't be sort of necessarily coded as a victory for women. It's, you know, something that just is essential um, in our modern everyday world for everybody. So um, I think that I, I sort of agree with um, what others have said, though, as well, that this isn't necessarily the structural change that's required or certainly isn't the structural change that's required to reshape how the childcare system works. It is a short-term investment that is certainly welcome, but it's, you know, it's not necessarily going to change um, the situation of underemployment for women, which I think is a more significant, uh, you know, underlying issue um, in the policy setting. How should they be so addressing 45%, that? Pardon? How should they be addressing that then, uh, Dr Coffey, that underemployment? Uh, well, <laughs> that's a very, that's a very complex thing to do <laughs> and it's sort of certainly not being done in, in this budget. Um, but you know, 45% of women are in part-time positions and women fill 54% of casual jobs. And that's largely linked to, you know, basically the unaffordability and lack of childcare services and, you know, as being affordable. So certainly making childcare more affordable should encourage more women to be able to work. There's clearly lots of structural drivers there and, you know, gender roles, which, you know, specify that women are the ones who, you know, tend to take the caring roles. So perhaps it would be good to invest in you know, men being able to take parental leave and men being the ones who are the carers more often as well. So, yeah, we would need probably a bit more time to go into that one, but yeah, there are certainly that's... some really good um, proposals being put forward by the Grattan Institute recently, which, you know, did propose an overhaul to the childcare system that would, you know, really be linked with women's more full employment. I've spoken to a few female friends, Dr Coffey, over recent years just about their superannuation and how nervous it makes them. Um, the government is trying to close the gap here between men and women regarding this minimum amount, this minimum threshold people must earn to get superannuation. Is that helpful? Oh, I think I think definitely. Um, you know, that's one of the key underpinning factors of the um, the pay gap and the gendered wage gap that we have. But that's also, you know, of course, linked to the figures that I just spoke about regarding casual work and, and part-time positions. Obviously, you're going to 
get much less superannuation in those positions. So I think, you know, the question of employment and um, it being part of the policy, policy setting, that women don't fully participate in the same way as men, that, you know, that is why superannuation is the issue. That's, you know, the structural cause of that. So I think investment in that is good, but it's sort of, you know, when you're not looking at the structural causes that underpin these issues, then it might only end up being kind of a surface solution that would take a lot longer and potentially be more expensive in the long run. Um, but I mean, to be fair, I don't really, well, not to be fair, but I don't necessarily expect um, this particular Morrison and Liberal government to be making structural changes. But um, so I suppose the increase in funding and attention is welcome, but it's not going to, you know, solve all of these very deep structural issues. <laughs> Dr. Coffey, let's make a date to talk another time. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Thank you, Dr. Julia Coffey, sociologist and senior lecturer at the School of Humanities and Social Science at the University of Newcastle. If you're taking a child to childcare this morning or maybe you've already done the drop off and you're wondering what it is that the government has done here that we're discussing in this realm of women's participation in work. They're talking about increasing the childcare subsidy for families with multiple children. Um, so they're also talking about extra federal funds for preschools and to come to an agreement with the states and territories to provide 15 hours a week of free preschool for each child. But that depends on the states and territories coming to the parties with very various um, reforms to increase the number of children coming into preschools or with this aim for school readiness, but with the flow on effect, as Dr. Coffey was saying, uh, potentially leading to greater participation in the workforce for women. It's nine to nine. Let's turn to eight.